a very warm welcome on this the feast of the Annunciation of our Lord to the Blessed Virgin Mary. It is morning prayer from the oratory at Carsholton Vicarage. We'll be using common worship, daily prayer, contemporary rite. We'll keep a few moments quiet prayer and reflection before we start. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. Blessed are you, sovereign God, creator of heaven and earth. To you be praise and glory for ever. As your living word, eternal in heaven, assumed the frailty of our mortal flesh. May the light of your love be born in us, to fill our hearts with joy as we sing. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. We say together, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God who has clothed me with the garments of salvation and has covered me with the cloak of integrity. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth puts forth her blossom and as seeds in the garden spring up, so shall God make righteousness and praise blossom before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her deliverance shines out like the dawn, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see your deliverance, and all rulers shall see your glory. Then you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of God will give. You shall be a crown of glory in the hand of God, a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. We say Psalm 111. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. In the company of the faithful, and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and honour, and his righteousness endures for ever. He appointed a memorial for his marvellous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gave food to those who feared him, he is ever mindful of his covenant. He showed his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are truth and justice. All his commandments are sure. They stand fast for ever and ever. They are done in truth and in equity. He sent redemption to his people he commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. 
a good understanding have those who live by it. His praise endures for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. <clears throat> first lesson is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, and beginning at verse 1. Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord, my strength is exalted in my God. My mouth derides my enemies, because I rejoice in my victory. There is no holy one like the Lord, no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For the Lord is a God of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed. The bows of the mighty are broken, but the feeble gird on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry are fat with spoil. The baron has borne seven, but she who has many children is forlorn. The Lord kills and brings to life. He brings down to Sheol and raises up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low, he also exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and inherit a seat of honour. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and on them he has set the world. <clears throat> he will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness, for not by might does one prevail. The Lord, his adversaries shall be shattered, the Most High will thunder in heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the power of his anointed. For the word of the Lord, thanks be to God. We say Te Deum together. We praise you, O God, we acclaim you as the Lord. All creation worships you, the Father everlasting. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, the cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, <clears throat> your true and only Son, worthy of all praise, the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you took our flesh to set us free, you humbly chose the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. <clears throat> come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you, we praise your name forever. Keep us today, Lord, from all sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we have put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. Let us never be put to shame. reading from the letter to the Romans in the fifth chapter and beginning at the twelfth verse. 
Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spread to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law. But sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of the one who was to come. <clears throat> but the free gift is not like the trespass. <coughs> For if the many died through the one man's trespass, much more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin. For the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation. But the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If, because of the one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by one man... <coughs> disobedience the many were made sinners so by the one man's obedience the many will be made righteous but law came in with the result that the trespass multiplied but where sin increased grace abounded all the more so that just as sin exercised dominion in death so grace might also exercise dominion through justification, leading to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The word of life, which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. The darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining the word of life which was from the beginning. That which we heard, which we saw with our eyes and touched with our hands, we proclaim to you. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of life which was from the beginning, we proclaim to you. <coughs> we say together, Benedictus. The word of God, begotten of the Father before time began, humbled himself for us and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. To show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us, to shine upon those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Word of God, 
begotten of the Father before all time, humbled himself for us, and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary. Let us pray. We give thanks today for the message to the from the angel to to Mary. We pray for that message of peace, of good news. We pray today for all Christian communities dedicated to St Mary. We pray for the Shrine of Our Lady of Walsingham. We pray for our nation and the world. For those who are feeling totally cut off. We pray for those working on the front line in the National Health Service, in the emergency services, all who in different ways seek to bring comfort and relief. We pray for those charged with the responsibility of government at national and local level, that they may act with wisdom integrity and for the good of all. We pray for those currently living with COVID-19, for those treating them. We pray for those who have died and for those who mourn. A prayer written by Andrew Nunn, the Dean of Southwark, for all in lockdown at this time. Ever present God, be with us in our isolation. Be close to us in our distancing. Be healing in our sickness. Be joy in our sadness. Be light in our darkness. Be wisdom in our confusion. Be all that is familiar when all is unfamiliar. That when the doors reopen, we may with the zeal of Pentecost inhabit our communities and speak of your goodness to an emerging world. For Jesus' sake. Amen. <clears throat> the collect or prayer for today, the Feast of the Annunciation. We beseech you, O Lord, pour your grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, 
and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me virtually. I hope that you have a good day. I invite you now uh, to join with His Holiness the Pope, His Grace the Archbishop of Canterbury and countless Christians across the world in saying the Lord's Prayer today at 11am. Thank you very much. May God bless you.